Okay, so we're going to talk about manufacturing this week. Um, so you finished your board, you've done schematic, you've done layout, and now you want to actually get this board manufactured. You want to have a physical copy of it. Um, so how do you go about doing that, and how does the manufacturer go about doing that? There's a, there's a couple different ways you can get a board made. Um, you can do it yourself. We have a we have a PCB mill in the makerspace. Um, it's very difficult to use, a little finicky. I don't really like using that. Um, you can chemically etch them with this process of like uh, masking and and yeah like dipping in chemicals and it will and you can etch your PCB yourself or you can just order one from a fab house so they they do these kinds of methods but a little more advanced and it's at this point very 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 cheap and very fast you can get next day turnaround for you know um like under 100 bucks um uh, they also can assemble your boards for you so they can solder all your components on for a different uh, for a cost of course but I don't really make my own PCBs. Um, you totally can if you have the equipment for it, but honestly, sometimes you can just save the headache and just get just order them. It's Osh Park. You can you can get like if you want to wait a week, you can get a board for like five dollars. So that's what I would recommend personally. I know there are some people who have feelings about PCB mills. Your choice. Um, so what is the PCB going to cost, and what's going to affect that? So. Um, the number of layers is going to is going to change that. So if you have a two layer board, that's the that's the cheapest. Um, if you have you know four layer board, internal layers, if you have a sixteen layer board, it starts to get more expensive. It's, it's more difficult to manufacture. The size of the board. So do you have a, do you have a tiny like one inch by one inch board, or do you have a massive you know massive board? That's gonna that's gonna change the cost. The extent of the testing that the fab house will do for you. So are they gonna just do a general like um, automated optical inspection, which we'll talk about in a second? Um, are they gonna they're gonna like um, design test fixtures for your board um, that, that can change the cost of it assembly um, are you going to get assembled at all so this is like putting components on the board um, if you want them to put the components on for you that's going to cost money um, it's going to cost more money depending on how many sides you want assembled so like only one side or both sides um, the total number of components and the complexity of those components so um, you know if you have like a million little resistors and, and um, packages it's going to be more expensive than if you just have like you know three components oops um, the level of detail so um, yeah, like how tiny your traces are, um, do, they, do they need to switch to a different manufacturing process, um, the smallest hole size you have, um, number of holes, of different size holes, so um, like if you have if you have to switch out the drill bit more than once to drill those holes, uh, it's going to cost more money, so if you, you probably want to, want to try to keep the holes a consistent size. Um, shipping is going to cost money, so you know, are you shipping it, um, do, you need, like, do you need it tomorrow, or can you wait a week? There's just some basic things that the cost will change. Um, there's a million factors, especially when you're doing like um, uh, mass manufacturing of these things. So what kind of in-house testing can you get? So generally you flying probe, which is basically um, this thing, which is like, it, it's, it's literally just like a, basically a multimeter. And it goes through and just te tests if there's any unwanted shorts. Um, it tests to make sure the things that you want to be connected are connected, that kind of thing, um, based on the designs that you have sent them. Um, this, you can you can do your own like custom testing for large scale production. So if you want to like build test fixtures to test like a certain part of your board and make sure that something is functional. So maybe like maybe you want to program it, or maybe you, maybe you want to like, you know, program your mark controller, or maybe you want to um you know test a sensor and make sure that it's reading reasonable values when you fed it something something like that. You can you can design your own test case tests and either either they can ma make it for you or you can make it for them and ship it to them. Um this is yeah this is more for large. You would never do this for like a for like a one off um project. Um. A bed of nails is another thing. So this is what this looks like. These are pretty cool. You basically have little like um, either test points or like you can use vias for these, and and the bed of nails will go through and, and measure all of those um, all of those points. And so it can test. It can do some of the things to flying probe, but um, quicker and and more effectively. Of like test connectedness, or you can program with these. You can like you know you have test points on the microcontroller and, and program your board through a bed of nails. It's pretty cool. And then you have um automated optical inspection where you can like you know like look through the board and um. Uh, see if there are any shorts or anything like that. So there's just different kinds of ways of testing um, your boards in-house. Assembly. So um, it's different. It's a different process for through-hole versus SMT. Um, unlike when you do it yourself, SMT is actually easier for um, uh, a, a fab house to do um, because they can do it with a pick-and-place machine. So a pick-and-place machine is like these things. Um, basically, they, they go through and they have these. They have all your components in. Um, like in rolls, so this is like a roll of resistors or something like that, and they and it basically like will literally go and like put it on the board, and, you know, plop it down, plop it down, um, onto this onto the solder paste, which just places all the SMTs, and then it just puts it through an oven, um, uh, it's called the reflow oven to um, solder them all down. Um, so that's that's pretty easy for them to do. This is all automated. Um, sometimes if you have like a small scale, they'll they'll solder your through holes by hand, which can be costly. Um, on on bigger systems, you can you can have it um, automated too, but it is more expensive for the house to do that. So usually, and it's easier for you to do it personally. So you might as well just 
have them solder all of your uh, SMTs and then hand solder your um, your through holes if you're doing like a small scale thing. Um, uh, it's yeah, cheaper to do it on one side. So yeah, obviously, you know, you have to like flip it over um, to do both sides. So just having one side and having all your components on one side is cheaper for them to do in-house. A very important concept here is called attrition. So let's say you have 10 of a certain kind of resistor on your board. Um, you can't send them 10 resistors because the way that this machine works is like you're feeding it in and um, there needs to be like something left for it to hang on to. So you, you couldn't send them 10 of a single resistor. You have to send them like 12 or 15 um, of those resistors for attrition. Um, so it's something to think about, like it's pretty cheap. They're usually like 10 cents a piece. So it's not usually a big deal. I mean, especially when you're doing like multiple boards, you know, you wouldn't have to send, let's say you're doing like 10 boards and each has 10. Um, you don't need to send them like, you know, 200 and you can send them like 100 and 110 or something like that. Um, because they're this is doing it like this with this uh, pick and place. So how do they actually manufacture the boards? Um, I'm going to work in, uh, in conjunction with this this diagram here. Um, there are a few key steps that are easier to see in images, but the the general idea is generally using kind of chemical etching process to define the copper regions. So like you know what are you going to what are you going to cut away and what are you going to leave of, of the copper? Um, you drill holes with the CNC. So uh, this is just like a mill basically that um, is is programmed. So it just will go through and drill the holes where where you want them to be, and then it will plate them. So you know you've plated through holes, which means that the metal connects both sides. It will it will go through and do that. Um, you apply solder mask to non-copper areas, copper areas that you don't want to be exposed. So you'll cover the whole thing in like you know like I said, if you, your board is green, it will cover it like in a green layer. Um, you can uh, uh, tin the copper area. So like applying like uh, um, uh, solder uh, solder paste to all the copper areas that you want to um, be soldered, and then you can apply silk screen, so like the text that goes on top of it. This is a more in detail um, description of how this works. But basically, you cut the board out, you drill all the holes, um, you uh, can basically etch out. So we etch out the copper, like I mentioned, chemically etch it. Um, automated, automated optical inspection, so you make sure it's correct. The layup is um, so you have you have the copper layers that you've now etched, and any internal copper layers. Then you have like the the internal things, like the um, the fiberglass that goes inside, insulators, the insulative layers that go inside, and then the um, the core. Um, so you, you lay that all up and laminate it so it all you push it all together and um, make it into one board. Okay, so after lamination, you would um, do some just more etching and, and drilling and um, put a solder mask over it. Any kind of testing needs to happen. So high pot is high potential. You basically just put a, a huge um, voltage across it and, and see if and see if it breaks it. Open short testing. So like yeah, either via a flying probe or a bed of nails, you can just test if there are any like unwanted opens or unwanted shorts. Just more inspection, packaging, and shipping, and that's that's when it gets to you. Um, things are a little different for mass manufacturing. Uh, you guys will probably start out by just doing like you know projects on your on your own, but when you get to the point of doing this for industry, it's it's, it's very different. Um, it's much cheaper per board. Um, you may want to do more thorough testing. So if you have like you know one board, you can kind of work on it yourself, make sure it works, and make sure it works in your project. If you have a thousand boards, you're not individually testing each one of these yourself. So you might want the the house to do more um, open and short testing. Um, you want to modify your prototype to make it as small and cheap as possible. So if you have any, if you have any kind of components that are just used for debugging, maybe you take those out, don't populate them, um, make the board smaller if you can by removing as many components as you can. Another thing is that you're not going to buy components for DigiKey when you're mass manufacturing something. You're going to like talk to the suppliers themselves and, and form relationships with them. So you'll you'll like you know you won't get your your resistors from DigiKey, you get them from Yagio or or whatever. So that's just another thing that's different with mass manufacturing. Um, the build materials. So when you're done with your board, um, I've, I've given you guys these this build materials to assemble the um, the boards that I gave you. So what this is is just as a designator, and that's what's on your board. That's like you know telling you what what the component is, who the manufacturer is, what the manufacturing part number is, how many of them you want in the description. Um, this can be this can be helpful when you're like you have to order the components to now make the board. So you you've shipped off the the bare board to the fab house, and and you're waiting on that to get back. Now you're gonna like order these parts from either DigiKey or like I said, it depends on what you're doing, but um, probably for you guys it'll be DigiKey, um, etc. So you'll just be able to easily like pop all the manufacturing part numbers into DigiKey and, and make a make a list and, and order them. Um, make sure that this is like easy enough that anyone could could else could use it. Like when I gave you guys this bomb, um, there where well, there were points of confusion, so I could have probably done a better job. But you, you can see like. You can look at the thing and say, okay, like this is a this is a what the what the um, designator is, and this is what component I need to put on there. So if I give you guys a 330 ohm resistor, you know, you put it on um, R2, R3, R4, um, just so that someone else can assemble your board and make it. Um, next, we're going to go through uh, the process of um, 
taking a board from you have your schematic and your layout and how do you prepare it to send it to the um, palace because you don't just send them your schematic and layout you send them um, certain files called Gerber files um, or there's a few different ways of doing it but Gerber files are usually the most common one and that's what they will use to to know like how to make your board um, so we'll go over that in Altium Okay, let's go through an actual board and um, go through the process of releasing that board. Um, so I'm going to just open up my um, my layout that I made. This is what my layout looks like. Um, and we're going to go through the process of releasing it. So um, you have the, the PCB doc and basically what you want to export to your... Um, your manufacturer is some Gerber files, which will show you uh, layer by layer what, what you want the metal to look like, what you want each layer to look like for uh, manufacturing. So we're going to go and click on this and um, go to Project Releaser. Now, the first time you do this, it's going to ask you, it's going to tell you there's no document for um, uh, Project Releasing, and you have to just like accept like the default um, the default Project Releaser, which will just assign um, you know Altium's default out job file, which is fine. Just, just click yes on that. Um, this is what's going to open up for you. It's going to um, open up uh, the release document. Um, you can so source data is just like the yeah like the sources, um, and then fabrication will be like how you actually make it. You can also include assembly data, so that will if you want your board to be assembled, you want to know like what components are going where. You can include that. Um, we're not going to get these boards assembled with um, with components, so we don't need to include that. But if you wanted to, um, that's what that is. No variant just means um, you have one PCB dock, and you can create variants of um, the board with different components components included or not um so this is just the default board um and you can look at uh what you want to be included with that um where you want it to where you want it to be um like this is like where it will be assigned to if you want it to be like a zip or a folder um this is like if you want to include like the actual design itself if you want to look at um what what exactly is is happening with this um you can look at um not this one let's see outjob so uh the it's called outjob i'm gonna open this up and take a look at it um there are a bunch of different settings that you can set in here like what you want each document to have um if you want like assembly you can create assembly drawings um include those um uh, we can just look at like something like this, um, the Gerber files. So you can choose like the format and the units and um, which layers are included in the Gerber. So if you have like, if you don't want to include like your mechanical layers because that's not really necessary for assembly, you don't have to include those. Um, uh, you, you want to make sure you have all the layers that you want to be included. If you add mechanical layers to the plots, this really screws up your Gerbers. It will like overlay them and it looks very confusing. Like I do not click these. <laughs> At that one time, I was very confused by my Gerbers look like absolute garbage. Um, so that's something you can do and just look at look through the layers that you want um assembly data so um pick and place machine for for posting for placing components if you're going to be doing assembly things like that and different settings in here but the default is like pretty good you can you can edit this if you'd like for um different like manufacturing um, oops so we have to release and we can prepare it to be released um important things you need to make sure you're passing drc or this will not release properly if you haven't run drc on your layout like you cannot you can't do this it won't work um it will, it will, it will throw an error. Um, it goes through all these different steps to, to validate it. So it'll go through the schematic and, um, everything and it'll check to make sure, um, yeah, everything's, everything's good before it will release it. Then we'll just go through and generate all these files. You can see it's generating a bomb, so it'll tell you the bill of materials. This is why it's important to label your components with, like, their manufacturing part number, their manufacturer, and their, and their value, because that is what will go into this bomb, um, when you release it. So, important stuff. <laughs> so we'll just take a second to generate all these files um and then you can uh press release and that will generate the files on your computer um so you can you can check it out you can open it up um this is what it'll give you um you can help you can go look in here um i'm gonna go through some of these but um the bomb is here we can, we can open that up i don't think i actually have um excel so i'm not gonna open up that one but um let's see if i can open that up in Altium. Um, and then it will create a bunch of different things. NC drill is your drill files. You do need to you do need to include this when you're sending it to a manufacturer because um, they they will need to know like where to drill holes. Um, okay, so here's a here's a bomb. 
uh, it will it'll tell you the designators, the manufacturer, the manufacturer part number, quantity, and description. This is what you have. This is what you've in entered when you made the parts. So you can see, you know, we have twelve LEDs here. They all the same part number. There's twelve of them um, per board, and this is the description of what it is. These part numbers will help you when you want to order them. You can go to DigiKey and um, just type this in and and, and make a make a list. Um, you can export this to DigiKey and it, it will make a list for you. And when you're assembling the board, you know, okay, we have C1 and C2, and then I have C3 and C4. Uh, which ones are those supposed to be? Which one, it, which ones are the 0.1 microfarad capacitors, and which ones are the 33 picofarad capacitors? Um, okay, I didn't actually label this this well. I should change that. But these are 33 picofarad capacitors. These are 0.1 microfarad capacitors. Um, so you so you know that when you're assembling the board, which ones to put where. You can go back to um, Altium, and we can look at um, the uh, Gerber files that were generated. Um, it's really interesting to look through these. In my opinion, I'll just um, open up all of them. Um, yeah, like I said, these are just layer by layer um, what your board is going to look like. So it's going to take a second to open all of these. So this is like a mechanical layer for the for the board outline. Um, you can see it's a Gerber Mechanical 2. Um, it's at the top layer. So I have a copper pour on this. So this is what it's going to look like. And it, you can see um, it's showing you just, it's it's literally, this is like what the manufacturer is going to etch. Um, it's going to etch this exact copper. And the, the black areas are where there's no copper and the red areas are where there is copper. So this is covered in a plane, this ground plane. Um, you can see what the traces are. Um, and where this is connected to the, to, the, to the ground plane, where it's not connected to the ground plane, uh, where vias are, etc. Include the same thing for the bottom layer. It looks pretty similar. Um, got the VDD power plane, um, and like what's connected and what's not. Um, traces shown. You can look at the the silk screen. I believe that's um, which one's that? Uh, top overlay. Um, I made a nice little. I just drew this um, for fun. This is the this is what the silk screen is going to look like. So if you guys have seen the board, so that I gave you, uh, this is what it looks like. This is what like the, the text on it looks like. That's a top overlay, and there's also a bottom overlay. A lot of, it has a lot of designators on it. You can see it's flipped because like it's on the opposite side of the board, so it's 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 supposed to be flipped. Um, uh, these are like all the designators and 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 indicators for you know pin one and um and part placement things and um ECEs can do everything. Um. Uh, yeah, you can just go through all these if you want. There's some like these are like these are the courtyards for different components. So you know the the keep out regions. Um, uh, let's see, this is oh this is paste. So this is like um uh, so Gerber bottom paste. So all the parts that are on the bottom where solder paste would be placed if you were going to be assembling this um at the uh, fab house. Um, let's see, oh uh, solder. So this is just the top solder. Um, and then different mechanical layers. Um, I don't think there's anything on this one, so we could we could choose not to include this if we wanted to. Um, these are three D bodies of components. So that's just with the Gerber files. Um, and once you once you have the Gerber files, you could uh, zip that up and set it to a manufacturer. Another thing I want to look at is the um, the properties menu here. Um, properties. So this is the properties of the whole board, and these are some things that you might have to enter um, to the manufacturer when you're when you're ordering your board. So like the important like um the board size. Um, so as you can see, I did not uh, follow my own advice in terms of making this like a, a reasonable dimensions. That's because this, this is a kind of just like a toy board. If it was if it was going to be like a board actually used for something mechanically integrated, I would um, make this some like reasonable. I'd make it like 50 by 100 instead of 52 by 98. That's kind of stupid. Um, but these are the things kind of things you're going to enter into the manufacturer website to say, okay, um, you know, how big is your board? Because that's going to determine the cost. How many how many components do you have? Um, uh, how many holes do you have is a big one. So uh, pads via holes. This is this is the thing you have to enter. DRC violations. Okay, we'll look at that later. Um, yeah. Uh, how many layers do you have, etc. Um, so this is, these are some things that you'll have to you'll have to enter into your manufacturer um, when you're ordering your boards and to tell it like how much this board is going to cost. Um, yeah, so that's that's how you that's how you release like documents and how and what the what the manufacturer is going to see when they order your boards. Um, we will be ordering boards for you at some point if you if you finish your boards in time. Um, I would love to order you guys a board and maybe we can walk through that process together and, and so you can see you know what you have to enter and, and what what kind of requirements you're going to have. Um, knowing the requirements of your manufacturer before you start your board is is is, is huge. So um, we're probably going to be ordering these from like uh, JCL PCB or it's JLC PCB. Um, you can also order boards from Osh Park. Um, uh, so there's some, there's some nicer board manufacturers that I've used, like Sierra Circuits is um, a very expensive U.S.-based um, board manufacturer um, that is that produces super nice boards. 
and has and has really good uh has really like um like a lower level of detail is very good the level of testing is very good and, and much better than these kinds of like cheaper board manufacturers you're going to get but you don't really need super intense nice things for these boards because they're, they're very simple um yeah so that's how you would uh release a board and then you would send these documents over to a manufacturer including the the drill files um i can show you i can show you the drill files real quick they're kind of interesting pick and place is also kind of interesting um see i think it's i think it's this one or maybe it's okay so this is just showing you like um, the oh, this is this is interesting. This is um, so the tool you're going to use. We're so going to use five different tools for the different um, hole sizes that I've that I've um, selected. As you can see, there's no like, um, there's no like 12 millimeters and 12.5 millimeter um, uh, mills. Sorry, not millimeters, mills, because that would be stupid. Because then you would have to use two drills for essentially the same thing. And um, it tells you like how many of each kind of hole there are. These are all plated through holes because I don't have any things that are just like, um, like mechanical holes or anything. Um, so that's pretty interesting. Um, it shows you like you know the, what different how many different tools you're going to be using, which is again part of the cost of the board. Um, and then I think one of these is going to show you like where these holes should be drilled. Let's see. Yeah, so this is this is like a this is um for a CNC and it'll tell you like where these holes are going to be. Um, so yeah, it has again these five different kinds of holes that um and their their dimensions. Um, and then it will tell you like where all of these holes are going to be placed. Pretty interesting, in my opinion. Um. Yeah, so that's, that's that's what it takes to manufacture a board. Um, and so something like this that we've worked out with all these different layers is going to be exported in that format to send to a manufacturer, and they will validate it and um, and manufacture it for you and ship it and ship it to you. So.